And up next, we have Ashkbit Stanikar, who is a postdoc at the University of Michigan. Um, and he will be talking to us about emission lines from super winds of superstar clusters. Hello, hello, good, good evening. And today I will talk about my recent hydrodynamic and photonization result of the super wind simulation from which uh, driven by superstellar clusters. <clears throat> super wind and the super bubble typically observe in the <clears throat> in the starbursting galaxies. Um, and uh, this uh, super wind uh, is the driven by thermal and radiation feedbacks uh, from OB association and the uh, supernova explosions. In uh, some of the super winds, uh, some of the, the starbursting galaxy, uh, we see the separation of the super winds and also strongly radiative uh, coolings, which uh, cannot be explained clearly. And in this uh, work, I did uh, hydrodynamic simulations of uh, super wind and super uh, bubbles. <clears throat> this uh, hydrodynamic simulations is uh, based on the Adriatic's uh, analytical solutions by Chavalier and Kalej, which developed in 1985. And later, the radiative solution developed by in 2004, uh, which, in which they included radiative cooling solutions. Here you see the difference between adiabatics and the radiative solution, and you see the higher metallicity contributed by to a strong cooling in the this uh, cooling curve of uh, super wind. <clears throat> and here is the typical uh, profile density profile and temperature profile of super bin and super bubble. And uh, here you, we have a bubble, which is uh, produced by its temperature of 10 million kelvins. And here we have a shells. And here is a result of the hydrodynamic simulations. In the low velocity, you see the separation of super wind and the catastrophic coolings. And, um, but in high velocity, you see the formation of the temperature bubbles. And I did a parametric investigation. I, did, I run a series of grades uh, for different uh, mass loss rate and different uh, ambient de density and metallicity and velocity. And uh, in this example, which I show here, we see the catastrophic cooling happens in the high metallicity and low velocities. And CC is catastrophic cooling, CB is catastrophic cooling with bubble, and ABAC is adiabatic solutions. And I did a photonization uh, with Claudius. And here you see the optical solutions, and we see they are overlapped with region, which observe as a, a surface regions. And I also uh, extract UV emission lines, which you see here. And you see how UV emission line change by metallicity, ambient density, change of ambient uh, density, and change in velocities. And this cross and plus is associated with and uh, catastrophic cooling, attack catastrophic cooling with bubbles. And we see how the change in metallicity and change in ambient uh, density contribute to the formation in, of catastrophic coolings in these hydrodynamic simulations. Also, there is other line. Also, we I extract this for radiated bounded model and also extracted for partially density bounded model. And you see the change variation in UV emission lines and by different metallicity and ambient densities. And the other thing is important is uh, oxygen-6, uh, because in one observation, they observed uh, oxygen-6 in uh, suburbs regions, in nearby suburbs regions. And uh, here you see uh, which, how the change of metallicity contribute the formation of uh, catastrophic coolings. And you see a diversion from typical pattern uh, because of catastrophic cooling, because of uh, the strong radiative cooling, this path, they, this uh, model which have catastrophic cooling, they don't follow the typical patterns. <clears throat> and this is a summary of my talk. I talk about how uh, we did hydrodynamic simulation, which is uh, uh, analytically solved by Chavalier College. Also, radiative, we include radiative cooling, which analytic solution developed by Silich in 2004. 
and we did parametric investigations of the catastrophic coolings by changing metallicity, mass loss rate, and wind velocity. And we see in higher metallicity and low velocity, uh, we have uh, the formation of strong radiative coolings. And uh, I produced by using Cloudy model, I produced the PPT diagram and uh, UV diagnostic diagram in order to help to diagnostic which region we have uh, catastrophic coolings. Thank you. If you have any question, I can answer. All right, thanks for that. Let's see if there's any questions on the chat. Um, okay, so I have a question. We have plenty of time. So um, I'm, of course, superstar clusters is not my area of research. So I'm, I'm wondering um, how much optical data does there exist that these kind of models can be applied to is it really common to have all of these different lines for different superstar clusters yeah here you see there this optical data is from this four paper it's for uh, from green p analog and server's galaxies but uh, this optical uh, is uh, integration over whole galaxy so we may not uh, able to see the catastrophic coolings in this optical sample, but we can use the UV data to see which one is associated with catastrophic cooling, because typically with those catastrophic cooling, we have higher carbon fours and also we have oxygen six. But in optical data, they are those surface regions, as you see, there are overlaps with those uh, surface regions. And it looks like from from these diagrams that you can't really diagnose metallicity. The metallicity mm -hmm. lines all seem to cluster around each other. With change in metallicity, it's contribute with no, yes, in optical no, but in the UV, you see the change in metallicity mm -hmm. uh, contributes to to higher cooling. So, oh, oxygen three reduced oxygen three over helium two you reduce by increasing the metallicity because me increasing metallicity contribute to uh, cooling effects. But in optical, yes, uh, optical is a bit difficult. But in UV, yes, you see, we see the, how the change in metallicity reduce oxygen three. Right. Um, and so what are your, so with this, uh, this um, model, these diagnostic diagrams, like what are your next steps in this project? The next step is uh, we, here you see, we have cross and plus, which is associated with, with, that, with suppressed super winds because of strong catastrophic coolings. And uh, here I show, yeah, here you see the separation of this bubble, this bubble, temperature bubble is not forming. And the next is that we should uh, find a way to see how we can use these diagnostic diagrams uh, to identify this uh, formation of uh, suppressed spin or catastrophic coolings. Mm. As you see here, is in this region is not catastrophic, but when there is catastrophic cooling, there is a reduction in carbon four and so it's shifted to left. Also, it's similarly for this metal, it's shifted to left because of uh, surrounding radiative coolings. It's mm -hmm. reduced oxygen, oxygen four. No, it is just a carbon four. Okay. Um, all right. Any other Well, that was really interesting. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, okay. So. Our next.